Hello and welcome to the Southern View. We're coming to you live from the Sri Padmanabha Swami Temple in Tiruvananthapuram. A temple festival is on here and the gods have blessed us, had blessed us with a day of rain and respite from the summer heat from all our travels across Tamil Nadu into Kerala. What a glorious day in terms of weather it was on the campaign trail here in Tiruvananthapuram. Remember our journey started in Chennai. We went all the way to meet Anna Malai and the DMK and the AIA DMK candidates in Coimbatore, went down to Virudhanagar, went to Tutukudi, Kanyakumari, and now we are here in the capital city of Kerala, Tiruvananthapuram. The battle here is a clash of personalities. Rajiv Chandrasekhar, the Rajya Sabha MP and the Minister of State for IT, fielded by the Bharatiya Janata Party here against the incumbent three-time MP and diplomat Sashi Tharoor, who were both on a campaign trail. The third factor and perhaps the X factor in this election here is the CPI's Panni in Ravindran, the left front candidate here in Tiruvannam. In the last two elections in Tiruvananthapuram, the BJP has come second to the Congress uh, and the fight this time is tough here in this constituency. A fascinating contest here in Tiruvananthapuram, obviously with fascinating personalities too. Extremely media savvy, affable and uh, extremely popular amongst the urban personalities Rajiv Chandrasekhar and Sashi Tharoor. I caught up first with Rajiv Chandrasekhar and then with Sashi Tharoor. Very similar questions on the campaign trail. Let's first listen in to Rajiv Chandrasekhar on his campaign trail. Joining me now is Minister of State uh, for Information Technology, Rajiv Chandrasekhar, the BJP's candidate here in the Tiruvananthapuram Lok Sabha seat. Nice rainy day here, Rajiv. A respite from the summer here. Yes, it's been raining uh, yesterday as well, uh, late night last night and today as well. Uh, you know, the defining feature of this election campaign has been this personality clash between you and Sashi Tharoor. Is that just a non Malayali way of seeing it? Is, uh, you know, Panni and Ravindran, the CPI candidate, seems to be lost in the optics, at least from a national point of view. What's what's the defining feature here? No, I, I think it is uh, more uh, Mr. Tharoor's uh, attempt to do it, uh, make it very personal. I certainly have not. I have uh, campaigned completely from day one on the issues of development, progress, opportunities, investments and jobs which uh, Tiruvandoran sorely lacks and certainly in the last 15 years has not done anything about. So I have not, uh, I don't uh, think uh, uh, this is about personalities at all. There is obviously people who haven't done very much in their uh, opportunities when people are giving them the opportunity who want to make it about personalities, that's not me. I'm not doing that. It's, it's, it's reaching a level of acrimony. There's a defamation I case not, against I have, I'm very clear. There is no acrimony. I have demanded an apology for you. No, I am, uh, I am uh, only saying simply that when you get personal and make baseless allegations, the law of the land will kick in, which is the normal thing for anybody. I certainly haven't made it acrimonious. And I, when he said that I am paying money to some uh, social and cultural organizations, I, as is anybody's right, I chose uh, the right to legal uh, notice, asking him to clarify what he meant and the evidence that he has or face criminal action. He has tried to duck it. That's fine. So no question of an apology. He's demanded what? No, look, let's not get into all this uh, clickbaiting kind of journalism. This is a serious election. There are serious issues involved. There are people of Tiruvandaram who have been denied all, all kinds of opportunities and their problems not solved for the last 15 years. And I certainly don't want this to become some little clickbait about somebody saying something or somebody not saying something. Uh, you know, you have a three-time MP who's the incumbent here. You've got an ex-MP, Pannayan Ravindran, who's the left candidate. You've not really been in the constituency as in nurturing it for many, many years. Now, 
uh, how do you see yourself is that an inherent disadvantage no, anybody who starts uh, the first time lok sabha uh, is inherently uh, a newcomer so i am a newcomer in the sense that i am totally outside the politics of the udf and the ldf of not doing anything of uh, taking people's mandate and sitting on your backside i certainly don't believe in that i certainly believe in uh, taking a mandate of the people taking the opportunity that they have given to serve and making something out of it i have had 18 years in politics and i certainly uh, will argue that i have a stellar record in public service uh, this argument about being a newcomer or an old comer is a bit too rich coming from a person who is uh, air drop from washington dc into indian politics 15 years ago or indeed a political party that had for many years an italian uh, as a president so i think it's a bit irony dies when uh, any time a congressman opens his mouth and talks about an outsider you know you speak uh, you the usual conversations we have with you is about it semiconductor etc here it's a lok sabha election how do we translate that level of conversation in your conversation with me but many people have conversations with me about drinking water many people have had conversations about governance in bengaluru many people have had uh, conversations with me about corruption in government and politics so it depends on who's talking to me if your fixation is it i'll talk no, it I'm, i'm asking you how do we translate that kind of conversation and you know that india and that conversation to a local electorate the, 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 the conversation i'm having is about creating a much more robust ecosystem of opportunities for our young malayalis in tiruvannamuram they have sorely lacked 37% of undergraduate seats in tiruvannamuram and kerala are lying vacant because students prefer to go outside the state for studying and working and that is something that is unacceptable in today's india at a time when prime minister narendra modi ji is creating opportunities and youngsters want to fly and uh, reimagine their ambition it is only kerala and tiruvannamuram under the udf and the ldf where children have to worry about being killed when they go to university so that is certainly an issue that i want to address it is certainly part of what i want to do in tiruvannamuram which is make you the youngsters feel much more positive about the opportunities that they have and to create those opportunities we are skilling and investments last couple of questions you know 33 odd percent vote share for the bjp consistently over the last couple of elections in tiruvananthapuram but the congress seems to have that 10% extra edge there also seems to be you know the left and the congress are national allies they are fighting each other at the local level you think the three way fight is a problem for the bjp in tiruvananthapuram how do you see this electoral arithmetic 10 years of narendra modi ji's government has told has shown to every citizen of tiruvananthapuram who have benefited from over 9 lakh pm aishman card 24000 homes and uh, many many other Uh, schemes from the government, including free vaccines, free ration. They know what Narendra Modi ji represents in terms of governance and the developing and changes in their life. So the issue is not at all about whether India Alliance two partners represent the challenge to the BJP. The issue is whether they will resort to some dirty tricks or vote transfers, etc., etc., to keep the BJP out. And I am ensuring that I campaign hard to make sure that even if they try that. we have enough of a majority okay now i'm asking you you said clickbait journalism don't do it but i'm asking you a serious question which i'm going to pose a similar question to dr tarur as well why rajiv chandrashekar and the bjp for tiruvananthapuram kerala and india and not sashi tarur and the congress or panniyan Ra- Ra- ravindran and the left well, the answer is very simple you've given an opportunity for 15 years to an mp he has done very little excepting lay claim to some government of india schemes and plans and projects and it is time for uh, a new opportunity to be given to a new mem- member of parliament who has an 18 year track record of doing things and who has a track record today of politics of performance and uh, he will certainly use this opportunity to move tirundaram forward and create more opportunities for the youth for the women for the farmers for the fishing uh, communities of uh, tirundaram it's a very simple question it's a very simple answer simple question simple answer and those who know you know that you've been working on kerala for a while now you invested yourself heavily in terms of the campaign strategies here in 2014 do you really think that the bjp is going to break the barrier this time in kerala which has eluded the bjp a parliamentary seat on its own i think the people of kerala are fed up with the indi alliance the people are fed up with the last 70 years of what they've done to kerala and the bankruptcy and the financial bankruptcy and the lack of opportunity the people of kerala want change 
and the BJP in the NDA is the change that they they actually require and they need. I must tell you, Rajiv, I've been all around Tamil Nadu. It's been sultry hot. This is such nice weather. You must be blessed for the day today. Huh? Yeah, today is a is a is a pleasant day, and uh, I hope it stays that way. Let's hope it stays that way. Thanks very much, there, Rajiv Chandrasekhar, there on a campaign trail here in Tiruvannathapuram. Number three, Sarvi, Sneha Sarvi, Rajiv Chandrasekhar. That's the first time contestant here in Tiruvannantapuram speaking about his campaign, but the three-time MP of Tiruvannantapuram, Sashi Tharoor, the inimitable Sashi Tharoor, was at a campaign rally as hard as well on a roadshow across Tiruvannantapuram. He had to cut it short in the afternoon because of sudden downpour, uh, and then he resumed his campaign in the evening around 4 o'clock. I post similar questions that I'd asked Rajiv, in fact, one which was absolutely the same. I also asked him about the personality context and in similar campaign vehicle to, to that of Rajiv Chandrasekhar as well. Let's listen in to what Sashi Tharoor had to say. Tharoor is on the, not on the driver's seat, but on the candidate seat here in Tiruvanantapuram Lok Sabha constituency. What a glorious day, sir, in terms of from the summer, what a respite with such a nice cloudy rainy day. Is there a Tharoor way of saying this? <laughs> well, it certainly was uh, uh, the hottest campaign quite literally because we were having 35, 36 degrees of weather uh, heat every day for the last month and suddenly today we had this dramatic, dramatic uh, uh, rain which was torrential, drenched us completely, drenched the poor people waiting on the street to receive us. So I took an executive decision to just suspend the campaign for a couple of hours, let the place cool down, go into interviews and other things and come back when it's better. Right now it looks great, I'm sure we'll move along fine. Ah, it's a nice day to campaign but the political temperature is quite high here in Tiruvannantapuram. Uh, it's become a personality clash between Rajiv Chandrasekhar and you. Rajiv says you have done this personality contest primarily because you've engaged in personal attacks, primarily because you want to hide your, uh, you know, uh, whatever failings have been there as a, a, a member of parliament. I have no particular feelings I'm aware of. I believe I've had an outstanding track record as a member of parliament for the of the Purim. I have a 66-page report of achievements and detail in Malayalam, which people are reading uh, and reminding themselves. And at the same time, I think most of the country knows me as somebody who has spoken up effectively on all the major debates facing the country. So I don't see where the feelings are, except obviously somebody who has not been in Trivandrum for the last 15 years, like Mr. Chandrasekhar, he can only say these things because he doesn't know the reality. Well, when you, as you say that, sir, uh, you know, in terms of uh, this personality clash between you and Rajiv Chandrasekhar and the optics of it seems to have squeezed out the CPI candidate and ex-MP. There is no personality clash. It is a clash of ideology. We are talking about Kerala having to make a choice between a candidate who not only delivers, but who takes certain very clear positions on the key issues facing the nation versus a candidate who represents a party that has communalized discourse in this country, that has presided over a demonization of minorities, particularly Muslims and Christians, who are the two substantial minority populations here, a, a party which has weaponized 
CBI, ED, IT and so on and the party which is the process has brought our democracy into discredit. Today we are being seen outside in other countries in the world as an electoral autocracy rather than the full-fledged democracy we were. And all this is the legacy of the BJP. So for us, we are running against that ideology, running against what they have done to our country. And that's the message. I happen to be the personality who's carrying that message in the BJP's strongest constituency. So they're trying to make this about personalities. It's actually an ideological debate. And in that ideological debate, I believe we have the upper hand, as we've done in the last two elections. Okay. As for the communist candidate, it's also true that in the last two elections, the BJP came second. Even though in the 2009 election, I took the seat from the communists and the communists MP who was a sitting MP at that time is the candidate now, 15 years later. But despite that, they've run a rather lackluster campaign and it does look more and more like a straight fight with the BJP in which I'm ahead. As you make that point, and, I, and I'm asking you, you know, with the left and the Congress being national allies in a parliamentary election, is it clearly, you know, a precursor to things to come that Kerala is becoming a Congress versus BJP battle? Uh, may not be in terms of vote shares, but in terms of the larger narrative in Kerala, the left and the Congress are together vis-a-vis -vis the BJP. So does this make this state move towards a larger BJP versus... It's not, it's not a contradiction. First of all, it's happened before. We have spent 55 years opposing the LDF in the state. And power has alternated between us for the last 55 years. But at the national level, on key issues, particularly the communal issue, they have stood with us. In 2004, they won most of the seats in Kerala, but they supported the Manmohan Singh government when it was formed in 2004. So it's no contradiction. We have in our country essentially two sets of elections going on. There is a national general election, but there is also undoubtedly uh, a set of 29, 30 state elections because in each state the political character of the state is different, the history of the state is different and the realities are different. So here in Kerala, left and us are against each other. Very next door in Tamil Nadu, CPI, CPM, Muslim League, Congress, DMK are all together. Okay, so uh, you know, what about it? What about accusations of a tacit understanding between the left and the Congress in a seat like Tiruvananthapuram, uh, which is potentially the reason the BJP is being kept out? That that was that's one accusation. There's been a tacit understanding between us because we are sworn enemies in the state of Kerala. And uh, if you talk to any congressman about the left, or talk to any leftist uh, party worker of about the Congress, you will see how strong and how deep the feelings are and the passion of passionate feelings there are. If anything, we have seen a number of places there has been collusion between the left and the BJP because the BJP nationally really believes in pursuing this Congress Mukta Bharat concept. And therefore, if they find the election is tight between the left and the Congress, they would rather see the left come to power than the Congress. And so, even in the last assembly election, there have been a number of seats where there were plausible reasons to see that people who normally voted BJP were asked by their party to vote for the left. That's the deal. It's not between us and the left. Okay. When you say that and you mention the ideological confrontation, etc., etc., one of the things observers have pointed out about the INDIA alliance is the lack of a categorical stable face as an alternative to Narendra Modi. Uh, you know, you've got you've got a bunch of parties coming together, but do not offer a concrete solution while there is a problem We're statement. Very many specific concrete solutions. Look at our manifesto. Look at the five nays we're putting across. We have very, very concrete solutions that we are offering. No doubt about that. As for a face, this is not a presidential system, it's a parliamentary system. And the parliamentary system, you're voting for ideologies, principles and policies. You're not voting for a face. At the end of the day, at the end of this period, 
We will find the face, the leaders of the coalition that wins the election will find the face. In 2004, no one was voting for Mr. Dr. Manmohan Singh's face, but he gave you a very stable government for 10 years. Why can't you expect that again? Okay, you're going back to the 2004 experiment. My last couple of questions here on this bumpy campaign trail here in Thiruvananthapuram, wading through the traffic right there. I asked this question to Rajiv and I'm asking this to you. Why Sashi Tharoor and the Congress and not Rajiv and the BJP or Pane and Ravindran and the left for Thiruvananthapuram, Kerala and India? Because in Trivandrum, in Thiruvananthapuram, they've had a, a, a successful MP who's worked with them and solved their problems repeatedly. We've seen a situation where, for example, when the Cyclone Oki struck, I was out there on the coast for four days making calls to the Navy, the Coast Guard, the ministers, dealing with their issues, seeing the problems. Uh, and when it comes to, uh, when it came to COVID, I was the first MP in India. Within 24 hours of the lockdown being announced, I actually managed to go and get uh, RT-PCR test kits into Trivandrum, PPE uh, gowns and masks and so on here. Before we move on, I also asked Sashi Tharoor to drop his politician hat, put on his diplomat hat and share his thoughts on the Prime Minister's comments to the US magazine Newsweek on the case of China and uh, the need to resolve the abnormality in relations between India and China. This is what he had to say. The Minister has said that it's time to resolve the border issues with China to resume bilateral talks. Can you put your politician hat aside and put your diplomat hat on and give us a response on your, your, your assessment of it? I will put my patriot hat on, which is very simple. The Chinese killed 20 of our brave Javans in June 2020. They have occupied permanently 26 posts out of 65 that both armies used to patrol in for all these decades. This is the only abnormality that needs to be addressed. The Chinese have to withdraw from that and restore the status quo ante, where both countries had a viable modus vivendi since 1976. If the Chinese don't do that, there can be no normal relationship with them. We cannot deal with the Chinese from a position of weakness. They will never give us an inch more if we do that. We have to be very firm. The action required is not from us, it is from them. They are the ones who have violated the status quo ante. They are the ones who have taken over our land and our patrolling points. They are the ones who absolutely must redress that situation. Then we can talk about normality. Thank you, Thank you very much. We just tried to wriggle in a bit of diplomacy in the middle of a hectic local political campaign. Remember the fascinating differences between states when it comes to election campaign. In a Tamil Nadu, when the media is on a vehicle, everyone wants to cater and pander to the media right there. The carder around are happy to see the media interacting with the leader. But in Kerala, it's very different. You cannot anger the carder and the local leaders. They demand their attention from the leader. In fact, on Tharoor's campaign, we were asked to get down by the local Congress leaders because they wanted the candidate to meet the people and see the people and not have a distraction from the national media. So fascinating cultural traits in different parts of the country and between even the southern states. Uh, something uniquely to Kerala is about the demand of people to get their attention and get their interaction time. They take it as a right. It's a fascinating state in itself. And the third candidate in that context, remember we've spoken about Sashi Tharoor and Rajiv Chandrasekhar. We tried reaching Panni and Ravidran, but he was out on booth level meetings today and did not have time to speak to us. He has promised to speak to us another time. But remember, he is an ex-MP, someone who won this seat in 2005. Uh, the left used to be the second force in Tiruvananthapuram until the 2009 elections. Since 2014 and 2019, it is the BJP which has taken the second spot as far as the Tiruvananthapuram seat is concerned. 
Remember, Kerala is still left-ruled and in other constituencies, there is still a strong left versus Congress fight that's playing out. So those fascinating aspects of this state, remember it's an important battle for the left as well, to retain the numbers to remain a nationally relevant force. And those numbers come only from Kerala for the moment, largely in the, the only state where the party is in power. We will try and track every twist and turn in the Kerala campaign for these elections. Those pictures that you see on your screen is that of Mani and Ravindran, the ex-MP and the left candidate from the CPI here for the Tiruvananthapuram Lok Sabha constituency. We will be travelling to other destinations in Kerala including Trishur and Wayanad in the coming days but that's all we have time for on the Southern View this evening. Thanks for watching. The news continues here on NDTV.